Well, hey everybody, John BTV Digger once again. This is the video part two of our colonial home site that I hit uh, along with Joe and Dan of Green Mountain Diggers. Remember I told you a couple videos ago we found, or at least I found, a colonial home site down in a neighboring town in a cornfield. Hit it about four times now, a couple times individually, one time with Joe and I, and now this video coming up was a little bit of me and a little bit of uh, me, Joe, and Dan when we were returned back to the field. Tons of great old coins, relics, you name it, have come out of this field. And we've got to go back there in the fall because there's a lot more waiting for you. So enough of me talking here. Let me get to the video and I'll show you the first part with me by myself and then some with uh, Joe and Dan as we tear it up once again. I cut copper, baby. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Another awesome, full, intact crotal bill. Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. And it's another Drake bust. It's an 1865. The date's clearly readable right there on the phone. Look at it. Great seal button. And it's deep, so maybe it's not crushed. It's not crushed. Holy crap. All right, here I am for my first uh, real good find of the day. I did find an old bullet uh, and an old weedy, uh, but I didn't really film those. This is my first really old target. Let me. Uh, Pan down here and show you where it is. Uh, if I can find it here. Here it is, right there. See that, folks? Kind of a pancaked uh, dandy button. I'll take that all day. This is the place again that we pulled uh, at least nine coppers and some great buttons out of here. So I'll clean that up and see if I got some design on it, but that's a nice, uh, nice find. Let's keep on pushing along. On to the next. and steady folks about 10 minutes after that uh dandy button my next row copper baby number 10 from this site look at that what are we gonna have and it was a little bit deeper so maybe i get some detail oh there's gonna be some detail on it maybe a matron one cent i think this is gonna be a matron head or maybe even a braided hair it's gonna be you have some pretty good detail on it let's see How about that? Can you see her face into the left there? I'm going to have to clean that up, but I'll probably be able to get a date off of it. I'm going to guess 1830s, maybe 1820s, something like that, but a uh, heck of a find. Let's keep plugging along. Joe and I tore it up here a few days ago. Uh, this is a couple days later, but there's still going to be some stuff in here. You never get it all. This one is a little bit deeper, and I'm just going row by row really slow, so... Let's see if we can pull a quick few more goodies out of here. That's a nice one for sure. I'll get some detail on that for you. On to the next. Well, here I am with my next find. This is about a 45 signal on the AT Pro, and I typically am kind of cautious to dig those. It was right on the borderline of whether I wanted to dig it or not. 45 and up, I usually dig. Below that, I don't. Um, so I took a gamble just because it was a very small target and deep in a smooth sound. And I got myself a really tiny little flat button. Look at that. little dimpled uh, pattern there on it. And the shank looks like it may be gone in the back. Just a little tiny cuff button. That, couldn't even, that could even be like a little furniture tack type of thing where the tack broke off. I'm not sure. I'll have to clean it up and see if there's a shank mark on it. But that's a very nice find. I'll take that all day long. Another old relic from way back. On to the next. Well, the flat buttons are slowly starting to add up again, folks. Here's my next one. And I'm probably going to stop filming all of these unless there's something really interesting like a military or a really nice dandy button. But there's a nice uh, flat button. Shank's missing. These buttons are ringing up generally in the uh, 55 to 70 range, something like that on the AT Pro. Below that, who knows what they could be. But in that range, and it's a small... Uh, target there uh, it's usually going to be diggable very nice early 1800s flat button Let's see if we can get a few more interesting things for you guys on to the next well there's my car there here's my next find and this is a nice one folks 
I always find a few of these at Colonial Home Sites. Another thimble. And that one's fully intact. Look at that. Nice dark green patina on it. It's not silver like the one um, I found a week ago or something like that, but that'll take that any day. Nice thimble from the early 1800s. Fully intact. All day long, folks. All right, on to the next. All right, here's one more button uh, just to show you real quick. I dug this out and picked it out of the iron here. How about that for a nice little gold gilted button there? Beautiful. A little flower design on there. Look at all the gold gilt left on it. A little, little shank is ripped off. It's either an early two-piece, it looks like, perhaps, maybe 1850s. The house was on the 1850s map. Um, let me bring that away so you can get it in focus here. There you go. Beautiful little button. All right, I'm almost out of here. Just a little, few, little while longer. Let's see if we can pull a few more things before I head home. On to the next. All right, I'm gonna try a live dig right here, folks. I popped a 78 to 79 signal out of the hole. It's in one of these clods right down here. I think it's gonna be a large scent, but let me see. It could be trash, you never know. It's a large scent. Look at that, oh, you know what, it's not. It's a giant dandy. That's still quite all right. I thought it was a large scent, but look at that big guy. Holy cow. About the size of a half dollar. Shank intact. That ring up so sweet and tight, I knew it had to be something good way out here in the field. I mean, you pan up here, here's the field, and if I go back to my car, when you get a tight 78 signal that far from the road way out here, you know it's going to be good. So I'll polish that up and... Uh, We'll let you see if it's got some kind of design on it. It probably does. It probably has a little flower design or some little etched pattern in there. You never know, but I'll take that any day. I'd have liked to have seen another large scent, but I'm never going to complain. Colonial flat button. All day long, folks. On to the next. here with Joe and Daniel from Green Mountain Diggers again. Back to the colonial site we've been to uh, a couple times. Uh, I came down here toward the end of the field near where another house, modern house is, and there's a small iron patch here as well. So I think there may have been a shed or a barn or maybe a starter home here. But I got a scratchy like 80 signal. I said you got to dig it even though there's can saw here. And if you zoom in right here, Joe, yep. here's a copper right there. It's definitely a copper. Down about six inches or so. It wasn't too deep. It's kind of thick, so I'm going to say it's going to be a braided hair or a matron. It's not going to be a drape bust. Um, so who knows? Maybe it's something different. Uh, white. Oh, oh I see a Liberty. Oh, it's a matron. It. Yeah, look at the weird color on this. See well, the Liberty yeah. right there? Oh, yeah, I can see it clearly. Yeah, let me see if I can get a date real quick before we cut away. Sometimes if I just go in my... Uh, of course, it wants to go back in the hole. Oh, yeah, it can be some. 1816. Whoa. First year matron, dude. Can you see the 16? Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at the coloring on that. Yeah, like a like a burnt orange color. The back is worse, so luckily for us, or for me, the, it looks like the the obverse was facing down. So, nice, 1816. Yeah, yeah, yeah killer find. All right. All right, let's see if we can find a few more things here. On to the next. Well, getting soaked again, guys. Um, it's raining, hopefully it'll stop pretty soon, but uh, I don't know, what do you say, Joe, 10 minutes after? Uh, oh, it's like five minutes. Five minutes, and, and uh, I'm walking right in Joe's footsteps, so I had to rub <laughs> it in a little bit. It was pretty tight signal, if you can look right here. It's right here in this dirt clod, right there. And uh, it looks thick. Thick again, yeah. Thick, braided hair or matron, right? Let's take a look and see what it's gonna be. It's gonna be one of those Liberty Caps, eventually. Maybe one of those has got my name on it one day. 
I saw Pete, my buddy, dig one that was just unbelievable over in New York last year. But, uh, all right, hold on real quick. Let me rub it off on the dunes here. <laughs> This one's going to be take, going to take a little work. Um, I think I see a wreath back there. Yeah, one cent, and uh, I see I see Liberty. Um, now it's going to be a. No, I think I think you, maybe you'll see Liberty right there. It's hard. Oh, yeah, okay. You see that? I yeah. think it's a matron again. Yeah. It's going to take a little work on this one to get some detail on it. But hey, man, not going to complain. <laughs> I'll come back with a close-up shot if I can get some detail. Two coppers, five minutes. It's the way to do it. On to the next. Tearing it up today, folks. Copper number three. This is like another little undetected home site. It's not on any map. It's down about 300 yards from the place we pulled about 10 coppers in a real last week. This is copper number four, and Daniel dug a, I think he said he dug an Indian a little while ago. This one was deep, about 10 inches. I wasn't sure I was gonna dig it because there's a lot of iron in here, but there was just enough of a repeatable tone that I dug it out, and check it out here, folks. Really thin. I already kind of wiped it off and had Daniel take a look. I think it may be like a Connecticut or a KG. See how thin that is? I may have to take a little Brillo to that. Um, Cause I don't, if it's a drape bust, it's really thin. See right there, see like the top of somebody's head right there? Could it be a drape bust or a KG or something different? I have no clue. I'll have to get back to you on that, but that's three coppers in about 15 to 20 minutes, man. I'm killing it today. Also got a flat button. It's weird, I got three coppers and only one button. Go figure. I'll take that ratio any day. On to the next. Well, we're back inside for the uh, green velvet or blue construction paper wrap up here. I'll be pretty quick here. This was actually two hunts, as I kind of showed you on the video there. One solo hunt. This is all from the same site that uh, I've hit personally and got a, a permission on earlier in the spring and returned two times with my buddies uh, Green Mountain Diggers with. Uh, so I've been there four times, two times on my own and two times with Joe and uh, once with uh, Joe and Dan. So pulling out a lot of great relics, and there is still more in this field, folks. I'm going to have to go back in the fall after they cut the corn because there's another home site in that field, and we were pulling out more large scents and buttons and everything before we got run off of there. So let me go through it real quick. Lots of buttons, nothing military this time. Several nice uh, flat buttons, uh, part of a pewter button. A couple little uh, furniture tack-like little buttons. This one had uh, some nice gold gilt if I zoom in here. I kind of showed you that on the tape. Uh, it was a little bit out of focus. I apologize. Uh, an old early two-piece. This one may be a furniture furniture tack. I'm not exactly sure. I cleaned it off. Um, and it's just kind of plain in the back. But I don't see a tack mark, so maybe it was an early two-piece button and it's just the, the front. Um, most of these are plain Janes. This one was a Kendrick and Ives button. Uh, you can look on button back marks. Uh, and find out the dates on these. These were 1830s, I believe. So nice to get a Kendrick and Ives button there. And then the big dandy buttons. And a lot of times these will have uh, designs on them. So a little scallop pattern. You saw me dig this one in the field. I thought it was a large scent. These big dandies ring up just below a large scent, more like 75 to 79. This one's plain. And then I did not get this one on tape right around the same time on that solo hunt. Look at the pattern on that guy with some patina. No shank on back, ripped out, but I love them. Big old early coat buttons, sometimes people call them dandies, I just like calling them coat buttons. Early 1800s on those. What else did I show you? I always keep some pottery frags. There's a lot of the pottery frags, blue and even a, uh, a uh, red piece of pottery there from way back, colonial times. Got uh, some sort of horse tack, uh, little pin there. I showed you my thimble. I got that on tape. That's a nice hole one. A lot of times you don't find these hole in the fields uh, over all these years. The plow blade scratches them up. This is an item I didn't get on tape. This is a warranted superior saw medallion. It's got a little peg on the back and what this was is warranted superior was kind of a cheapo handmade saw they made back in the 1800s. Uh, 
1840s to the late 1800s. And I started scrubbing it off and I saw the eagle on it. And at first I got really excited. And I, as I did further research and got the name Warranted Superior, I realized this was a saw medallion. So this would have gone in right with the wood, right on the wood handle as just like a seal, a manufacturer's seal. I'm dating this to mid 1800s. This was actually found at another home site uh, Green Mountain Diggers, Joe, Dan, and I hid right before the end of the day, and we didn't find a ton there. Joe did pull a large scent. I got a bunch of junk, but I did pull that out of there. And then finally to my coins, again, this is back to all the colonial sites. A lot of these are worn, but I was able to get IDs on all three, of, all four of these. This is a classic head, 1810. You can see the 1810 right at the bottom with a hole for some reason down in the lower right. Why they would hold it there as opposed to up top. Who knows? But I'm glad to be able to get detail out of there, and you can see one cent on the back. So an early date uh, classic head. Those were 1808 to 1814 was the date range on those. This was the last large scent I filmed uh, on the video there that was kind of deep and scratchy. This is a KG2. You see King George II facing left. Again, it's hard to determine if these are counterfeits or the real deal. If they're the real deal, they're back around 1750, 1749, something like that. That's a little early for Northern Vermont. Um, not to say that it couldn't have been circulated. There were also counterfeits that floated around into the late uh, 1700s. So that's what I'm gonna guess it is. But heck, colonial copper either way, and I'll take that all day long. And then finally, my two matron heads. The first one was the, uh, I think the very first one I dug in the field, 1834. Nice little coin, still has Liberty on there. I'm quite pleased with these in the cornfields because a lot of times these are very corroded. One cent on the back and I'm going to leave her just as it is. And then my earliest matron was an 1816. First state matron. You large scent folks out there remember there were no 1815 large scents. All the way up to 1814, they missed 1815 and then started with the matrons on 1816. The date's hard to read there but trust me that's what it is and it's got a really unique kind of burnt orange patina on this coin that I thought was very interesting. I don't know why they turn, turn, this one turned out like that. And you can see one cent on the back. So another very nice set of finds, and this is just a killer, killer field, folks. I'm gonna go back there. It's probably gonna be Halloween before I get back there and they cut the corn, but there are more goodies uh, waiting to be found out there. And I will surely show you some additional finds once I get back out there in about three or four months. So until next time, uh, I appreciate you joining me for this less, next installment of uh, the BTV Digger video series. And remember to get out there and dig it all, folks. It's waiting in the ground for you to find.